Fora TV. The world is thinking. After three months at Al Haramain, I began to believe in new rules and new moral injunctions that I once never could have accepted. I became amenable to the idea that Sharia, or Islamic law, was the best way to govern a society, and in particular, the very strict version of Sharia law that predominated within the organization. Weren't God's decrees superior to the shifting sands of modern morality? And with that, many of my old liberal assumptions came crashing down. Why shouldn't the state ban homosexuality? Or why shouldn't it enforce the modesty of women? I began to take these questions seriously. Around the same time, my college friend, Al Hussein Madhani, started to embrace a more radical interpretation of Islam. Before that, he had served as a bulwark against extremism. Al Hussein and I would have long conversations in which we would criticize extremists while trying to balance our liberal principles with a desire to be true to our faith. But as the summer of 1999 began, it became obvious that I was losing him to an extreme interpretation. Without Al Hussein's support, it was difficult to resist the draw I felt to a more conservative practice of the faith. One of the biggest steps, the bridge where I began to accept a purely legalistic interpretation of the faith, was when I finally decided to stop listening to music. This was no small sacrifice. I had loved music ever since I was a kid and had a, an enormous CD collection. But ever since Dawood had lectured to me about the impropriety of music, I struggled with whether I should remove it from my life. It seemed unfathomable that I could quit something that had meant so much to me, but I felt that I needed to make a decision. I drove my Tercel past the golf course, out toward the lake. Driving often helped me to clear my head and to think. As I drove, I listened to a mixtape that I had made back in college, each song seeming to bring back some long-forgotten memory. But this would have to end, I decided. There were my co-workers, but there was also my relationship with God. Was music prohibited by Islamic law? I couldn't deny the power of some of the evidence that it was. If I really believed in Allah, I had to be honest. Even if some music were harmful, or even if some music were lawful, sorry, the music that I was listening to was not. Stringed instruments were known to be prohibited, and I couldn't think of a song on my mixtape that didn't have a guitar in it. And the themes of my music? Allah, I knew, would not approve. There were songs about sex, songs about drugs, most of the music I listened to seemed religiously objectionable in some way. I drove back toward the house, knowing that this would be the last time that I enjoyed the music that I used to love. As I got close to home, I decided to take a lap around the block, a chance to listen to one more song. As Jimi Hendrix's Easy Rider reached its crescendo, I pulled into the driveway. I ejected the cassette from the car's tape player. I then held the tape in my hand and sat looking at it. Already, I was regretting the loss of music. I wanted, to top, I wanted to pop the tape back in and keep listening. I brought the tape into my room, thinking about the temptation of music. I needed finality. So I took the tape in both hands and squeezed it until it snapped in two. In that instant, the broken tape seemed like a symbol. I was turning my back on a life of not being serious about my faith. Then I grabbed a Kleenex from the side of the bed and wrapped the tape inside it. I didn't want my parents to see. I thought about how they had introduced me to music. Uh, I remembered that they'd given me a tape of the Beatles' Abbey Road when I was just six years old, old enough to, uh, for the album to hold my interest, but too young to recognize its true brilliance. I wasn't hiding the tape because my parents would be upset that I had stopped listening to music. No, it was something deeper than that. My parents had no problem with my conversion to Islam because our views about faith had been so similar after that, but no longer. I was now careening down a new road and didn't know where it would lead me, but I knew that my ideas about religion were no longer like those of my parents, and I knew that these differences would hurt them deeply.